welcome back to Pass the Move. For today's episode, we've actually finished off uh, with Spain, so we are here in Germany instead. And uh, you know, what better team to start off with than Bayern? Um, so, what we'll be doing, like we always do in the other episodes, is uh, actually give you a tactical and team guide who to keep, who to sell, what instructions to use, what tactical formations to use, and what actual tactics to use as well in general. Uh, and you know, who, who to keep an eye on for the future as well. So, we're just trying to set you up for success. Uh, just bear in mind you don't have to use all the advice that I give you guys, I guess, uh, you know, I'm trying to give it to you based on um, things I can vouch for, basically. So, uh, we will be starting off, as you can tell, I haven't prepared anything, this has literally just started, uh, just as you would when you set up a career, so we're going through things one by one, uh, I haven't set up any tactical instructions or anything like that. So. First, one of the first things I do is actually just have a quick skim at my squad. Looks like we've got a decent number of players here. Some of them are on loan though, so let's send them down to the under-19s, just to get rid of them for now. Uh, a couple of players on holiday, a couple of players injured, that's not too good. Uh, but we'll look into it in a bit. For now though, one of the things we need to do is uh, see what staff member we can actually trust, whose judgement of ability is best in the, in the staff, not in the squad. Um, Holger Breutsch seems a decent option. Your head of youth development, Wolfgang, is a really, I would say, pretty decent um, head of youth development. The only issue is he doesn't have too much good uh, judgment of abilities. At 15, 15 is not bad at all by any means, but you know, for a top team like Bayern, I'm pretty sure you could possibly replace him with a better alternative. He is German though, and he's got a really good personality, which does rub off annual youngsters. He's got great working with youngsters uh, attribute at 20, uh, great coaching uh, and mental uh, attributes. So, you know, if you're asking me, I would recommend keep him, but just, you know, uh, maybe when his contract ends, for example, or if he retires, that might actually help your team. Anyways, uh, it looks like we will be uh, using the um, judgment of our fitness coach, Holger Breutsch. Uh, so tactics, as soon as we set it up, um, it's automatically set by default on the 4-3-3. Uh, let's see what our assistant manager thinks we should be using. He thinks the 4-4-2 is a be better bet. And uh, I guess uh, we'll bear that in mind while we make our own instructions. So we'll be coming up with two. A uh, direct style of play. In, uh, in tactical... I guess tactical tactics. Uh, <laughs> but, the, uh, but we'll also be coming up with a direct style of play and a possession style of play. So we've got two options basically. Direct and possession based. For, uh, depending on what your preferences are we're just giving you examples of what you could do don't try and play with both it never works you have to try and build a squad uh, around one of these tactics but anyways so it looks like uh, we've got some decent numbers here but let's count them out we are a squad of 23 people now we actually do prefer 22 those are my uh, preferences and the reason is that I like to have a uh, first 11 of leading or star or world-class players of your division basically and uh, the backup 11 are the ones who are youngsters with potential to eventually become those leading or star or world-class players and, and I feel like that's the best balance for your squad you've got an experienced 11 who are ready-made players who will slot into your you know your team perfectly they'll help you win and then you've got your backups who are rotational they would have no issues with the minutes that they're getting because they're more than happy to play at their age uh, and be learning from you know the best in the world possibly but anyways uh, so we need 22 so it looks like we do have too many but let's see who's actually ready for the, this division and not and who's not so Torsten for some reason is at Bayern uh, Wolfgang thinks he's not ready for the first division and where's our guy who's our guy that we said we can trust the fitness coach I've already forgotten his name Holger there you go all right so apparently we can trust Holger and he also thinks that Torsten's not ready so let's send him out uh, you should possibly sell him but we're just put moving into the under 19s uh, to free up some space for now basically for the video so Nicholas another player he's only ready for third division even so that's even worse 
Um, Timothy, are you any better, Timothy? Nope. Alright, so let's get rid of him as well. It looks like we're actually going to be short in numbers at this rate. Sven? Alright, no, decent player. I guess he should still should keep him for the sake of this video. And it looks like we're sorted now. Okay. Alright, so we are sorted. Um, but we are now short of numbers, so we'll find out just exactly where we are short of in numbers. Uh, but let's sort out the players according to their ability and try and make a squad of our best 11. So these are our best 11, according, uh, 11 players according to our assistant manager. And we're going to try and fit as many of them as possible into the same shape, I guess, or the same uh, tactics. So we've got a goalkeeper, of course, Manuel Neuer, apparently the best player at the squad. Or Turo Vidal, a great centre midfielder as well as a defensive midfielder. Aryan Robin, a right winger, possibly a left winger as well. Uh, Robert Lewandowski, everyone knows all of these Bayern players, but we just need to go through them and see if we can play them anywhere else. Thomas Muller, striker, advanced playmaker, and a winger. Uh, Boateng, a centre back. David Alaba, one of the best left backs in the game, possibly the left back in the, the best left back in the game. Uh, Joshua Kimmich, of course, a graduate, I think. No, he's not a graduate of the Bayern team, he's actually just been bought over, but still, great youngster. Uh, and he's ready, one of the best 11 players in the squad. Got central midfielder in Thiago, can play attacking mid as well, possibly defensive midfielder if he's retrained enough. Mats Hummels, the centre back who moved from Dortmund, of course, and Douglas Custer, a player capable of playing both right wing and left wing. So, let's try and make a team of this. So, it looks like. As majority of teams, uh, we could play the 4-2-3-1. Uh, we can also consider playing the 4-3-3. And we can consider playing the 4-4-2, just like my assistant said. So, I would say... Um, whether it's, it's between the 4-2-3-1 or the 4-3-3 for the possession base. But I'm trying to see... According to their roles, what would suit them more? Um, you know what? Let's go for the 4 2 3 one. Alright, so I think we're pretty much already set with it, which is kind of ironic, but yeah. The 4 4 2, uh, we'll just have to quickly make some, in, you know, just quickly run through what type of instructions we'll be using and whatnot. So, uh, direct style play, attacking and counter is always your best bet, and I always mention that. But again, like I always say, you can do any of these uh, mentalities. Don't ever think that you're restricted to one or the other, we're just telling you um, which ones suit most your style of play. So, counter and attacking is best, without a doubt, for you know, being direct. We'll be using attacking because uh, um, and Byron rather are a top team, and uh, it's just for the sake of the video as well. So don't feel the need that you can't train your team to play on the counter as well. Instructions: higher, more direct, be more expressive, run from positions. I love to play between three to five tactical instructions at most team instructions rather. Um, again. You know, you, you can have just as much success with this as you would if you are a manager who likes to be a lot more detailed. So if you are, if you do like to be a lot more detailed, you can get rid of roam for positions. I would say clear broad to flanks and run in defense are perfect for a direct style of play, but you can do a lot more, you know, smaller details. Uh, things like passing in space, look, um, hitting early crosses, shooting on sight as well as a decent shout, but I would say that for the end of the game. Um, if you love your team, if you trust your team's long shots and think that they can shoot from anywhere on the pitch, then shoot on sight is a decent shout. Um, for your team shape, you can do things like deeper line and closing down less. Uh, you can even stay on your feet, and what would this would what this would do is actually draw in your opposition, your you know the team you're playing against. Uh, and that way you can hit them on the counter and that would make use of the instructions which are pass the space and hit early crosses. Staying on your feet is just for the sake of keeping good team shape. Uh, closing down less is pretty much the same for the same reason. Uh, so you naturally go a little wider when you play the you know, higher tempo and more, like, more direct style of play. Um, but if you want to go all out you could go all the way wide. So, uh, just for the sake of this video, we are sticking to my instructions, and these are the ones. Like I said, you can have success with either one. It's all about preferences, about how you like to play. I would just say, just bear in mind, if you are playing a more direct style of play, then without doubt, you do have to keep at least 
the more direct uh, passing and the higher tempo. Those are just basics. Anything else you could build around, but higher tempo, more direct, without a doubt. Um, the 4-2-3-1, we are playing a possession-based side, so I would say uh, counter standard and control are all very good for keeping possession. Of course, just like I said before, defensive, contain, attacking, overload are all decent shouts to do. Uh, just, you know, I, I would recommend not training them for it. It's just uh, in a mentality that you change during the game if you are... For example, trying to hold on to a lead, contain defensive are great. Uh, or if you're trying to get a winner, you can switch to attacking and overload if you're possession based. Don't don't think that you're limited to these. Basically, it's just that these bring out the best in your instructions. So control for the sake of this video, uh, lower and shorter, being more expressive, run for positions are my suggestions. It kind of is the opposite of the direct style play, and that's pretty much uh, the reason for doing it. Um, but of course, like I mentioned, you could always add more instructions. So retain possession is a very good shout. Uh, playing out of defense if you trust your defenders on the ball. Uh, work the ball into the box is a great one. Look for overlap is great. Um, run, I always like to tell my players to run at the defense but it might not be too good of an idea, idea if you're trying to retain possession you know might lose the ball. The ball depends if you trust their running, uh, their dribbling rather or not. Uh, if you're trying to play possession based tactics then you do want to try and win the ball back quick, quickly just like Gordola always did at Barcelona so, you playing, uh, so you'd want to play a higher line, you want to play an offside trap to complement that, you do want to close down more and that way you're pushing up your line as well. You might want to prevent the team's, uh, your opposition's short goalkeeper distri uh, distribution, that way you're closing them down even more. You could go the extremes of tighter marking and that way your opposition doesn't get a single moment's rest. You can also get stuck in, uh, that way you could possibly physically dominate your opponent. At the same time, uh, you would be winning the ball back. Just be a little bit careful that your team doesn't go overboard and get too many yellows or even maybe even red. Uh, playing narrow is always a good shout just for the sake of um, being defensively secure I suppose your team would have a really good shape um, but at the same time it really suits possession based tactics just for the sake that your, your, your team your players are closer together and that way they can keep the ball ticking over easier find each other easier and possession will be yours easier as well uh, I just like to mention like in all my episodes I have easily had 60% possession with these tactics just as much as I've easily had um, 60% possession with these tactics, you know, anywhere from 60 to 70. It depends on who you're playing, your quality of your players, and of course your opposition's formation as well. Sometimes if you're playing a 4-2-3-1, but your opposition's playing a 4-1-2-1-2, they might hold on to the ball a little bit better. So don't be too worried. Don't expect the same type of um, possession all the time. So these are the, you know, the shape, the mentality, the instructions we're using. But now we'll just have roles to make, and we can't exactly do the roles without getting to know our players a little bit better. So we'll do that now. And at the same time, two birds with one stone will be figuring out who to keep and who to sell. So Neuer, of Manuel Neuer, or Neuer, don't know why I always say Neuer. Uh, Neuer is, of course, uh, of course, your first choice goalkeeper. World-class player, without a doubt. It's about your backup that you might be concerned about. Who's going to replace Neuer eventually? Um, and uh, in Sven Otrich, or Otrek, uh, you really don't have... Um, a decent enough player. If if uh, Manuel was uh, Neuer was ever to get injured, you're really not relying on someone that's too good. It, your coach says he's a useful player. I would say, I would pretty much say the same. He is ready for the first division, so it's not like it's you know the end of the world. Um, but I would suggest selling him and bringing in a youngster with potential who can eventually replace Neuer as well, who is 30 years of age. So you know, kind of the perfect balance, really. You've got Lam and Rafina, both right backs uh, who are really starting to feel their age, I suppose. Um, just bear in mind, uh, Lam is going to retire, but he's still a star player, so he is your first choice. Rafina is a decent backup. Can't even seem to select him. He is a leading player as well, so very good backup. You've got great fullback options there. Uh, uh, you know, you could possibly play Lam as well in defensive mid, like a lot of managers have done, but you're short in the right back position, so just keep him there, I would say. You know, you might be worried a bit about his physicals, but he's still in decent shape. He's got a lot of natural fitness, which can help. It's just he's not a crazy fast player, but attributes of 12 for both acceleration and pace. I don't think there's much to worry about. Um, Alaba and Juan Bernat are your left backs and I think you're very well stocked in that position as well. Alaba is a star player, uh, Bernat is a leading player and still can improve a little bit more. So 
uh, a lot of competition in that place. I think you'll have your only struggle will be trying to rotate them enough. But Bernat knows that he's a rotational option, so I think I actually think you'll be okay. Um, so you're stocked, well stocked in the fullbacks department without doubt. Where you might be concerned is your centre back position. Now everyone knows Javi Martinez is not the best uh, central defender. Uh, in real life he occasionally does um, mistakes but in, actually in the game he's got perfect attributes for ball playing defender uh, it looks like all your players are capable of playing as a ball playing defender but you of course of course can't play two ball playing defenders so that's something for us to consider uh, Javi Martinez star player Boateng star player and Mats Hummels star player your issue might actually be rotating these players but once again, Martinez is the player who considers himself to be a rotational option, so he's a very good backup uh, to have without a doubt. All 27 years of age, ironically enough. Uh, you might want to bring in another centre-back, though you do need four, uh, so your fourth one should be a youngster with potential uh, rather than a player who's expecting, or a ready-made player expecting first-team football. And uh, I guess now the rest of the team depends on whether you're playing the 4-2-3-1 or the 4-4-2. So if you're playing the 4-2-3-1, your central midfield options are these selected players here. Um, I think because you've got five and you only need four, you might want to consider pushing one of them up into advanced, uh, into attacking midfield basically. So it looks like Thiago can play there. Uh, you might want to consider him playing him there instead. Um, I don't think anyone else can really do the role just as good as he does. Yeah, so I would suggest that you keep these four as your central midfielders. Push up Thiago to play along, uh, to play, you know, compete with Muller for the attacking midfield position, I guess, or for the attacking midfield spot. Uh, and that way, there's a lot more balance to it. But you might want to consider Muller and where you want to play him. So he can play a number of different roles. As a striker, he does have the finishing needed, but an advanced forward, not too much acceleration, acceleration pace. He's decent, but you know you might find better players. Uh, I would probably say your best bet is actually playing him in his shadow striker role. He seems to do best there. He's got a lot of aggression, anticipation. He's pretty much perfect for the shadow striker role. The problem is, do we need to play a shadow striker? Advanced playmaker is a decent player there. Um, it, it's just like. It's a little bit weird having Müller because he's the type of player that you don't necessarily... He doesn't fit in with possession-based um, tactics and the rest of your team does kind of thing. So you might want to consider where to play him. Um, but in the 4-2-3-1, we do need him as an attacking midfielder. We want to try and play him alongside, you know, play him with Lewandowski if we can't uh, let him play as a striker because that would mean he'd be competing with Lewandowski and uh, that's not what we need. Um, so that leaves us with wingers. So we've got Arjen Robin and Frank Ribery, as well as Doug Douglas Costa and Coleman. You're sorted in that department, really. Uh, Robin is still a star player. Frank Ribery, a leading player still. Both are old, though, so you might want to consider replacements. Kind of the reason why you got Coleman on loan for a couple of years. Of course, he's injured for a while. Costa is a, a star player for the division as well, so very good backup, of course. So you're really well stocked. This is a really good Byron team, basically. Very small tweaks is uh, what you're going to need. You're just going to need to get a little bit of a backup, I suppose, for these players and just try and slowly ease out the experienced players uh, and hopefully the youngsters can grow into those roles. You are, you do have a bit of an aging squad, but there's still very good players for the division, so not to worry, just keep an eye out uh, as they decline. And of course, Robin and Ribery, I think, both have issues with injuries. So yeah, just just keep those things in mind. Uh, the other place you might want to invest in, because we do only have 20 players, you need two more. So we've already mentioned centre-back is where you need to invest, and it looks like striker is where you need to invest as well. Lundowski, of course, your star player for the division, a very good striker, amazing attributes as always, and uh, all you need is a youngster with potential to eventually take over him basically, or to just compete with him a little bit, just so he's not comfortable uh, in his position, you know, you need that competitiveness in this in the tween in the team in the tween uh, um, so yeah that's all I would suggest if you are playing the 442 uh, then I would say that you have uh, different intentions kind of thing so you do have I, I would say too many central midfielders if you're playing the 442 this team seems to be suited to the 4231 a little bit more you could possibly play the 433 as well um, but 
really uh, the 4 for 2 if you did kind of force it, I guess. It's not really forcing it, it's just about you have priorities to make, or decisions to make rather. Uh, so Alonso is going to retire, so I don't think you should be worried too much. He is a first teamer for some reason, even though he's going to retire. Uh, but you would want to get rid of one of these players. You could possibly send out Sanchez on loan just for one season until Chabi's gone. And that way your central midfield has the, you know, the more, um, how do you say this? The more uh, balanced numbers, I suppose. If you have the four for two, you just need four central midfielders. Uh, you're already well stopped, like we said, in the winger department, so you don't worry about that. Uh, Muller would be playing as a striker in this formation, so it would mean that you would actually need a bit more investment. You'd have a, you'd obviously invest in the centre back. That doesn't change, but you would need two more strikers uh, to compete with Muller. Both of them should be youngsters of potential because both Muller and Lewandowski are ready for the first team. So now that we've got to know our players a little bit better, who to sell and who to keep, and uh, you know who, who to buy basically as well. Not who to buy, but where to buy. Um, uh, we can actually start to be a better judge of uh, our team instructions, or our team roles rather. So, you are playing a high line, if you are rather playing a high line, you don't have to do it, I'm not doing it, but if, uh, you know, Noe or Noya can actually, without doubt, play as a sweeper keeper, so it's a decent shout there. It would really suit the high line that you're playing, um, but I just love the standard goalkeeper, That's, I guess I'm just a bit traditional I suppose. Um, you've got central defenders who can play ball, to ball playing defenders instead, but you don't want to play two of them. So just one of them, ball playing defender. Pick who you want to play and who wants to play as a central defender. I'm sure they'll be just as comfortable as central defenders. Um, in your uh, fullback positions, I think you will have to play wing backs. But this is where you have a bit of a decision to make. Because um, both Robin and Ribery are inside forwards naturally. But your players, Coleman, your backup, Coleman, and. Or is it Kuman? I forgot what his name is. Kuman like the spies? I don't know, Kingsley. Uh, he can play as an inside forward as well. Um, but yeah, he, he, they might be a little bit more uh, suited to the winger role because, you know, decision making, composure. Finishing is decent, but I think both Douglas Costa and um, Coleman are both more suited to being wingers. So Costa is a left winger and Coleman the right winger. And that just seems to suit them a bit more, um, you know, because of their finishing, their decision making again, all that sort of stuff. So uh, when you're playing Robin and Ribery, you definitely want to play them as inside forwards and you have your players as wing backs to complement them. But when you are playing the wingers, then you would want to play uh, full backs to complement them. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, we are going with the first team. So we'll be inside forward on support and inside forward on attack. We just want to see who's more better at crossing, who's more better, who's better at crossing. Um, looks like Robin might actually be, yeah, so Robin is a right inside forward and he's better at crossing, so we'll keep him on support, Ribery will let him attack a little bit more and that way we'll have to alternate the wing backs, one on support and one attack and that way you have a nice little balance there and our flanks are sorted as well as the defence and our goalkeeper, that leaves us with midfield and attack, so uh, normally I would say false nine is your best position uh, or your role for, um, you know, keeping possession. But Lewandowski seems to be best as a complete forward on support and I would say use him in his best role because that way you get the best out of him and get as many goals as possible. False 9 though is a decent shout. You could start off experimenting with false 9. If he doesn't score too many goals, switch to complete forward on support. But my recommendation is complete forward on support. Uh, in midfield, you, like I always say, the 4 one you have to be a bit more defensive because you can get exposed in all these areas here. Um, you know, you're a lot more, because of how attacking you are with this, this you know, top four, um, it, you just have to be a bit more defensive. So I like the balance of a central midfielder on defend and a deep line playmaker on support. Uh, both of these roles uh, hold their position down very well and they are still very industrious, so it's perfect for this type of team. I think you do have the players for it. I'm pretty sure Vidal will be a great central midfielder on defend. Deep line playmaker on support, you can take your pick. Um, but if you didn't like, if you don't really like that, you could play the more creative, I suppose, uh, central midfield duo of a deep line playmaker on defend and a roaming playmaker on support, and that's a decent shout as well. Just bear in mind that you will be more exposed using these roles, uh, so you know you you might want to be tempted to play central midfielder on defend and uh, deep line playmaker on support. We'll have a quick look at the players and see if they can do that role, though, just to double check. So, uh, without doubt, Chabi Alonso, Kimmich, 
and Sanchez and Thiago all are very capable of playing the deep line playmaker on support and you know probably roaming playmaker roles as well but uh, it's about finding a central midfielder on the fence so Arturo, Arturo Vidal rather central midfielder on the fence very capable deep line playmaker on support not too much so he is your you know you are definitely going to be playing with him because he is the four star player uh, it's about the other central midfielders. Do you play with Kimmich or Chabi Alonso? Do you plan playmaker on support? Either one, they'll you know they'll suit. Your problem is finding a backup to Vidal for the central midfield on the defense. So you might want to consider deep line playmaker and a roaming playmaker, but again, Vidal doesn't suit it. So whenever he plays, maybe you can play him a box to box midfielder instead. It's all about preferences, but this is my preference always in a 4-2-3-1 central midfield on the defense. Deep line playmaker on support. I'd only say change this when you absolutely have no options. In that, but I think you do have options here. Um, in attack, though, in sorry, attack in midfield rather. Uh, advanced playmaker on attack is the best, but Muller's best role isn't really that. It would be perfect if he was an advanced playmaker on attack. I think whenever I think Thiago will do much better in this 4 2 3 1 role as an advanced playmaker, so just do that whenever he comes on as backup. But we just have to. Unfortunately, I think kinda. Unfortunately, uh, play Muller in his preferred role as a shadow striker, um, and just rely on the creativity of your deep line playmaker on support, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, with a four-two-three-one setup like this, you should walk to the league. Basically, walk to the league title. The four-four-two is going to be a little bit more different. You will have to play winger, so you'll have to retrain um, uh, both Robin and Ribéry. Uh, I would say, let's just for the sake of this, switch it around. So we'll let you know, the winger on attack be on this side instead compared to last time. Uh, and, that, and then we'll have to complement them in the fullback departments like we mentioned before. Um, you still, you know, you're playing a different type of tactic, so I'll be tempted to play Neuer as a goalkeeper. Um, but if you still want to play him as preferred role, super keeper is not a bad shout at any time. So, you know, I, I just I just prefer goalkeeper. Ball playing defender is still a great use in the, uh, you know, playing directly because they do help start counters. I love the deep line playmaker and box to box midfielder mix in a 4 4 2. It's perfect. And I think you do actually have the players for it. Box to box midfielder Vidal, you'll be using him in his best, you know, um, role. Uh, and then you do have the players for the deep line playmaker. But again, the same issue is that you don't have players. Um, you don't have a backup rather for Vidal, so Renato Sanchez probably can do the box box midfielder role quite well. I guess his decent forward position is bad though, um, but he seems to be most suited for roaming playmaker. And I'd I'd say the same. He's got great physicals and he does have the vision and passing to be a roaming playmaker in the future. Um, but yeah, maybe box to box midfielder is a decent shot as well. So I think we will stick with that. It is my preferred one, and you do seem to have the players for it. So deep line playmaker on the fence and the box to box midfielder is the perfect one. Now this is where things are a little bit different. You do want to eventually build to a target man on support, but uh, you do want to make use of Lewandowski as much as possible. So just play him in this comfortable, complete forward support role. Um, and I think you should eventually build to a poach role, but um, Muller is more suited to advance forwards. He's not exactly the paciest player. Uh, so you might want to make use of his other attributes like passing um, and heading and whatnot, because poacher, those kind of things kind of go away. With advance forward, he will be working hard so uh, you might want to make use of that basically. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I think you're set for both and you could, you know, either one switch. You could use either uh, tactics basically. And uh, I wouldn't say that either one is too uncomfortable. If you ask me which one suits this team a bit more, I would say the 4-2-3-1 um, works a little bit better for Byron. And uh, you know, you just, you don't have to use it forever. Just maybe a couple seasons until you slowly edge out the experienced players and you can eventually move on to the formation that you prefer. So let's have a look at the youngsters uh, and their potential. So the second team and the under-19 team, let's see if there's anyone with high potential. So Christian Fruchtol, Fruchtol. Right, anyways, either way, the German with the uh, Wonder Kid without doubt. For some reason, the media description isn't so, but he does have a superb rating for the first team, and he is a sweeper keeper as well. He's only suited for the third division, so he's not ready yet. Um, so you might want to hold off on the backup goalkeeper being sold and getting in a youngster, but if you do want competition for Christian, you could still bring in a youngster anyways. I would say bring in a youngster anyways, that's my suggestion. Otherwise, though, it doesn't seem like you have too many other potential youngsters. Um, 
kind of surprising for Bayern, the you know team of Bayern stature. Timothy is a he should um, be a really good player as well. But other than that, you know, unless these players surpa surpass their expectations, you've only got two players to look forward to, and, and there's you know no telling whether they will actually fulfil the potential or not. Um, but yeah. I think we're set. We talked. We talked about everything. We've talked about who to sell, who to keep, what tactical instructions to use, what tactics to use as well, and uh, you know the balance of the squad basically. So I think that will be all for today's episode. So if you did enjoy it, then please do, of course, hit the like button and subscribe for more daily Football Manager 2017 content. And as always, thank you guys for watching.